Hey one, hey all, welcome back to the channel. It's Monday, baby, that means it's countdown day. And today we're looking at a bit of a weird one. This one came up um, due to, to a fan suggestion, and it is not only the most ugly Transformers, not only the most awesome Transformers, but the most ugly Transformers who are also awesome. Bit of a weird topic, but the votes rolled in, they've been counted, they've been collected, they've been tallied for you. And this is going to be the topic this week on the latest GotBot Counts Down. Hey one, hey all, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, your most humble of hosts, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. GotBot. As always, man, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe, and while you're at it, light up my baby. And hit that notification bell, please. It helps me out a ton, and it lets you know when content of all sorts goes up here on the channel. Check out Machinery of Man, The Everything Factor, all the groups that I'm either a mod or an admin for, as well as all of my social media links. All of that in the description down below. If you are in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link. Check us out on Patreon. See what we offer to you through Teespring. Or, of course, hit the join button right here on YouTube to become a channel member, baby. And I just recently talked about uh, where I think Transformers will be in the next five years um, for patrons and channel members. But that's not the topic here today. The topic here today is the top ten ugliest Transformers who are still awesome. Now, in some cases, uh, people interpreted this as the character. So, in fiction, a certain character might look awful, but it has a great personality or a great characterization or great character development. Others interpreted this question as meaning their plastic rendition. So maybe it's a great classic character whose plastic rendition left something to be desired. The voting was really strange this time around. Usually you kind of see uh, things coming out uh, and sort of uh, you know gaining steam and certain entrants will get this many votes and certain other entrants will get this many votes because they become popular entrants as the voting goes on. This time around, we had so many that had low numbers of people voting for them, but there was so many who got voted for. So we're going to do the honorable mentions first. And just in the honorable mentions, all of these, by the way, have the exact same number of votes. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 honorable mentions, and I'm going to tell you now, I'm going to get number 10. I'm going to get number 10 here ready to go, because number 10 also had the same number of votes. So any of these 17, 18 could be slotted in number 10, because these all had the exact same number of votes. That's the way things went this time around. It was really weird. Luckily, the rest of the list kind of pans out easier from there. So, coming in first, we had G1 Ironhide. We all know that the windshield, like, face sticker was awful, even though the character was fantastic. We have Beast Wars Injector. We have Tripredicus. I thought that was a good one. Skylynx. Um, Skylynx is, Sky is such a weird-looking bot with such a cool alt mode. Uh, Bomb Burst. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, Movie Frenzy. I could get behind that. He's a weird spindly thing for sure. Dinobot 2. So asymmetrical, and he looks like such a hodgepodge, but again, great character, great character development. Uh, Torka, uh, Sparkless Bot, the Sparkless Bot, I mean, nice looking, nice mold, but of course it looks rusty and kind of gross and broken up. Um, what else do we have here? Transmutate, um, yeah, I mean, it's so weird. Transmutate is not a good looking bot, but uh, very, what? Um, magnetic type of personality. Like, people either really don't like Transmutate all the way around, or they felt so bad for the character. Uh, what else do we have here? Um, Shadow Glass or Action Master Thundercracker. Yeah, the colors are gaudy and look awful. Shout out to Input. He just recently did a version of the Siege Mold as that Shadow Glass slash Action Master Thundercracker. It looks spectacular. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, Bugly. Um, the Shark Decons, Unicron, The Fallen, Animated Lockdown, um, and Squawk Talk. All honorable mentions. Now, the one that I slotted in to number 10, and I did this really kind of arbitrarily. I did this because of all those that had the same number of votes, I, 
I sort of felt like for my tastes that this one fit in there the most. So while 10 is actually for once a bit of a personal selection, honestly anybody I just said could slot in here. Officially however number 10 is going to be this guy Fangry. And yeah I get it. I mean you know, arguably, some would say not a great looking bot because of the green face. You look at it and you automatically kind of feel a little bit sick, you know? Um, really weird uh, beast mode that it's hard to tell exactly what it is. I like the G1 and like this version, but there is a part of it that feels like they were scraping the bottom of the barrel when they wanted to come up with a robot that turns into something. Fangry really embodies that and for that reason he took the number 10 slot. Number nine here will be very quick because it's technically the same mold by way of Grotusk. Same reasons, honestly. There's nothing different here. People that voted for this guy voted for him the same reasons that they voted for um, Fangry. Of course, some people also said, you know what? It makes perfect sense that this guy would be on the list. I mean, after all, Grotusk slash Grotesque is in his name. How could he not be included on this list, even though... He's pretty fantastic. I can't argue, and for that reason he takes the number 9 slot. Number 8 is a gangly weirdo of a warrior who happens to have excellent molded in detail and a pretty, pretty cool looking alt mode. I'm talking about Movie Bludgeon. I think this was uh, Revenge of the Fallen, Hunt for the Decepticon, something like that. Very gangly version, and I get it. I mean, the guy's you know, got a skull, so he's probably like made up of a skeleton and bones. The molded in detail gives a very samurai-esque look, and it really sort of embodies it, especially with the texture detail on the front skirt and on the lower legs. Um, highly functional, but the tank mode is where this thing shines. Really beautiful looking tank. Um, beautiful tank, excellent detail, really weird, unattractive looking um, robot mode. That is supposed to arguably embody a skeleton. He might not look the best, but he is fantastic. And for that reason, he belongs on the countdown and he comes in at number eight. Now for number seven, I'm actually going to represent it with this guy. Um, except it's not really this guy. It's the entire Revenge of the Fallen Devastator. That hodgepodge mess of a Transformer that somehow, someway still looks imposing and still looks really cool at the end of the day. The Studio Series version or this KO version. Um, really, there's something like impressive and menacing about it despite its flaws and limitations. But you look at the coloration, it is absolutely asymmetrical. You look at the body, it's absolutely asymmetrical. He's lumbering, he's slobbering. Yeah, it's not a great looking bot, but it is a ferocious looking bot. And that's exactly what they were going for. And that's why he's awesome. And that's why the movie verse Devastator comes in at the number seven slot. Now, number six takes us to the world of Beast Wars and Fusors with Quick Strike. I get it. And the whole reason that this guy doesn't look good, in my opinion, is because of the asymmetry of the arms. You got the weird, huge cobra head arm over here, and then the claw arm over here. Like, I get it. It's so strange. I saw this guy, and I said, well, I need him because I, I want the Predacons from Beast Wars that appeared on screen. So I got this guy. But I was thinking I wasn't going to like it because of the like super weird long arm that's a cobra head and this other weird arm over here. But you know what? He transforms fun. He is highly poseable. He is a hoot and a half to fiddle with, to convert back and forth, and do everything else with. He doesn't look the best, but he functions tremendously well. And for that reason, he belongs on this countdown. And Quick Strike takes the number six slot. Ah. <sighs> I can smell the fresh air because we are at the most coveted of locations, the halfway mark. And at the halfway mark today we have technically something from Beast Wars, but more appropriately something introduced in Kingdom by way of the Fossilizers and Paleotrex. Yeah, I get it. It's not symmetrical. It's bony. It has a weird looking face odd coloration, super long arms, pretty much down to its feet. There's a lot here to look at and say, yep, not attractive. It's not good looking. It's not pretty. But when you 
go into the different kind of loadout configurations. I think that this is one of the more successful of the fossilizers. And when you go into his dinosaur mode, which I think is a Tyrannosaurus Rex dinosaur um, skeleton, I mean, I think. Um, you know what? That does look pretty cool. He is both ugly and awesome all at the same time. He embodies everything that this countdown is, and he came in at the number five slot. Number four is one of those characters that has a vicious streak, and that has one of the most unique head sculpts in all of Transformers, and it's also the reason that he is both awesome and the reason that he is ugly. He fills both of the requirements of being on this list simply because of his skull-like head sculpt. I'm talking about bludgeon. This is a trem tremendous plastic offering. Every time, going right back to G1, that I saw this guy, that I interacted with this character uh, in plastic or in fiction, I've always felt like Skullgrin is a huge threat, both mentally because I have always kind of embodied him with an intellect, whether the fiction has supported that or not is a different story, and certainly physically, because he has always come across as imposing, I think because of his skull. But at the same time, the skull is a pretty unattra unattractive, you know, kind of head sculpt and look to it, right? It doesn't look pretty. It looks menacing, it looks ferocious, it looks like it's going to stir up trouble. So it's successful even if not pretty. And that is kind of the embodiment of everything on this list, and that's why Skullgrin takes the number four slot. So much like our buddy Grotusk sort of belonged on the list because of his name being so close to Grotesque, he, in fact, some people call him Grotesque, that sort of logic applies to another character on the list, Repugnus, very close to Repugnant, and ironically, that same mold, this is the third time with this mold, the only version of this mold that did not make the list is Double Cross, or Twinferno, if you will, go figure. I, I think more than being actually kind of gross looking, or ugly, or unattractive, if you will, I think this guy made the list because of A, his bug mode, which or monster mode, which admittedly doesn't have the nicest look to it, especially with these huge chomping mandibles. The robot looks great, but I think a lot of the reason this guy got the votes he did is simply because of his name. I think people heard Repugnus and thought Repugnant and thought ugly and awesome, and that's why he comes in at number three. Now for number two, I honestly just didn't want to get the character off the shelf because he's kind of buried in behind. Though I do have a version of the character, and it's this guy. Yeah, baby, it is none other than Skybite. And I think that for Skybite, a lot of it came into his gritting teeth as well as his asymmetry. The fish mode looks great for a robotic shark fish. The um, robot mode often has a lot of kibble. It has sort of weird lower legs and kind of flat duck-like feet. His uh, fin on the top of his head is sort of gigantic, and he always has this like gritting teeth look to his mouth. There's a lot about Skybite that might not be attractive, but there's also a lot about Skybite that fans have become endeared to over the years that they absolutely love about the guy. Fantastic character, questionable look. Sounds like he belongs here to me, and he took the number two slot. And then that brings us to number one, perhaps the most unlikely number one that we've ever had on the list, arguably. One that I don't think a lot of people would have thought of had it not been for this particular list and this particular voting, because he's not someone who usually gets a lot of votes. And those who did vote for this character specifically cited the alt mode and specifically said, I don't even know what it's supposed to be. I don't, I don't even know what it's supposed to be. Who am I talking about? Blot. G1 Blot. Um, yeah, I get it. I don't know what Blot turns into either. It's a very unattractive type of monster. And apparently Blot is known for having, like, a bad odor that he doesn't care about. Everything about this guy spells disgusting, spells ugliness inside and out. But at the same time, he makes a pretty fantastic-looking robot. And the Combiner Wars one and the G1 one are both kind of fun to fiddle with and finagle with. So that's why he also fills the bill for being awesome. Bad looking uh, monster mode, or at least a weird looking monster mode, mixed with an apparent odor, balanced out with a pretty great robot and some great poseability and articulation and playability. 
the guy is an absolute winner on this list and takes the number one slot. And there you have it. We have the top 10 Transformers now who are both ugly but at the same time awesome. And you know what? I think the list kind of makes sense. Votes that came in for other characters were Whirl, Thunderwing, uh, Steelbane from the last night, last night Megatron, as well as uh, who else? Rack tonight had a couple. Um, Tentacle had a couple. Uh, Retrax. Um, who else? Bomb Burst did. Uh, I might have said Bomb Burst earlier, actually. Uh, let's see, as we go down here, Cyber Shark did, the Quintessons did, and Omega Supreme did. So, there you go. Whether you agree with it or not is a whole different story, because a lot of this list was definitely left up to the eye of the beholder. But, based on the votes, you now know what I know. Number one was Blood. I think it's kind of fitting. Let me know where your favorites fell, if they even made the list at all, because this was some wild, wild voting I appreciate. You guys coming by, give me some of your extremely valuable time. I do know how important it is to you. If you're in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link. Check us out on Patreon. See what we offer to you through Teespring, or of course, hit the join button right here on YouTube to become a channel member. While you're at it, hit the subscribe button, man. Stick around, have some fun with us here on the channel, and don't forget that somehow, some way, each and every single day, you right there, you do make a difference. And I look forward, baby, to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit either in the live streams on Thursday nights at the stop motion premieres of the old fashioned way, baby, right here inside the videos.